Hey, there will be six games today, no matter what happens now. And this is going to be the start to decide who will be that final tiebreaker match. Lee Sin Bandao taking that away from Broken Shard, who did play that earlier on in the day. Cassidy, there we go. That's not going to sneak through this time around. Is going to get banned out by the Wolves. Okay, so Braum actually being banned by Subaku, you were correct before. Target towards on Unlimited, played it nine games already. Clearly his best support, but not often we see that you banned away mm. against the Wolves. Let's see if Oriana is going to get banned here. Yasuo has been taken away from Selfie. Oriana is banned, mm -hmm. sure enough, away from Sol. So the standard ban. Dragas first pick potentially here. It's Youngbook's best champion. Haven't seen Mima doing too great on it. He's more of a big Shivana player. Will it be picked or banned? The funny thing is, both these top laners, oh. the most played champion is actually Shivana, but she's fallen out of favor a little bit, except for Mima, who still picks her up very often. Youngbok, we've seen Dr. Mundo a lot lately from him. Could pick it into Shivana if Superhawker wants to play it, but. Uh, Rengar is open. Impaler is apparently known for or as the best jungle Rengar in uh, in Europe. Not that we have too much competition at the moment. And Mime, of course, loves to play Rengar in the top lane in solo queue. Remember, of course, they talked about having uh, some sneaky tactics. We'll see whether this is sneaky enough or whether they are saving it for the quarterfinals next week. Did you just say sneaky on purpose? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so Morgana here, Subaru played it earlier. Been there actually one of the main picks for Kissing, and they love to do Morgana Tristana because you now provide the Black Shield to your late game hyper carry. It's a decent lane, you have some good poke, you even have all in potential, and then late game it just becomes so hard to deal with this hyper carry. So, uh, standard support pick at least for Kissing. Talking about AD carriers, you know, Mr. Rollins and Walleye both. Pretty much the stars of their teams, I guess you could say. Although Mr. Wallace has had a bit of a quiet summer, that's for sure. Wallite, though, he can play any AD carry that gets thrown at him, and he usually performs very well on it. Yeah, it's actually pretty weird. He's played eight AD carries already, which is the most of all here in Europe. And we've seen Ash from him, Jinx has been picked up, a lot of different AD carries. Lately, he's preferred the likes of, you know, Tristana as well, actually, for him, or maybe a Corky pick could come in. Not a team. Not going to be a team locked in, that's for sure. Mm, that'd be an interesting one. Ziggs, though, picked for Soren in that mid lane. So going with the mid lane champion early on, that, of course, gives Selfie an option of Ari. Don't forget, he played that very, very well last week. Elise will get locked in for Broken Shard. Ari immediately considered for Selfie. Standard enough here, Elise. So one of the top junglers, and they really want to put Soren on a champion where he can actually win the laning phase and really impact the map afterwards. Which is also one of the reasons he loves to play Orianna. And he brings so much lovely wave clear to the table here, but super hard crew. Definitely not gonna be Katarina. Could be the Aria pick for Selfie, but they don't actually have to pick it early on here. But there's still a lot of options. The jungle is open, the Sin is banned, Elise is picked. Just take the Rengar. <laughs> Just take the damn Rengar. Let's moment we are Cogmore probably going to come in for Mr. Riles. Is it going to be selected? Cats once again in Flick 2. Of course, Impan has played Jarvan a number of times. It is going to be the Cogmore for Mr. Riles, so no surprises there. I think we're going to see Ari for Super Hard Career here. I wonder what the Wolves are going to do to Cancer. And it is a very, very slow champion select so far. Both teams really thinking over the picks here and taking their time. Even the first pick, Morgana. Almost down to like five seconds before it was locked in by Super Hot Prune. We've seen him pale on Javan. Very mixed results. Good games, terrible games. So uh, one of these are inconsistent picks. And it would work with an Ari to catch people out of position from Copenhagen Wolves. However, Zix would be able to just set your charge out. For now, however, very standard picks. No uh, special tactic yet. Well, I mean, there's a lot on the line for these teams. And Honestly, with the quarterfinals looming, they don't want to give too much away. If there is any sneaky, sneaky <laughs> tactics sneaky. out there. I also say sneaky. You can now. Well done. Our yeah. voice coach is doing wonders for you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're proud of me. I am very proud of you. You do all your work hard at this. So, Tristana and Thresh locked in. That's a strong bottom lane pairing for Copenhagen Wolves and the Super Hot crew. We'll see how that works out between the two of them. At the moment, that Nami is... Well, we did just see a top Morgana. You never know. Yeah, you true. never know, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. No, I... 
Don't expect Selfie to play a lot of Morgana mid lane, however he could still surprise. But Subar crew actually heard them talk on their way down to the stage and they were saying they really want to win this game here. They want to avoid having to go in and play a tiebreaker against SK Gaming. So they want to go in here, win, win the game and just that's it. Focus now on quarterfinals where the Copenhagen Wolves. Of course the same deal. You don't want to end this situation where you have to play Gambit. Now if you lose, you get last spot in the LCS and no choice of who you're going to face in the challenge or in the promotion tournament. Yeah, well, at the moment, of course, Super Hot Crew, if they were to win this game, they would be playing Rocket in the quarterfinals. Otherwise, it will be a tiebreaker with SK to see who they're going to be facing. Ari is locked in and Shivana in the top lane. So standard, standard champions in forms of Super Hot Crew. This is what we've seen them play a number of times. It works well. It is a good combo for them. We'll see whether the Wolves have anything else tucked up their sleeve for the jungle, uh, for the top lane. For the top lane here. Dr. Mondo again has been the pick for Youngbok in the last few games. It's not works. been great. No, it's not been uh, the best pick for him, but it works against it works against the Shivana because sure you have some issues early, but you will become so tanky she can't deal with you in the late game points. She's good in mid game against him with a blade, but uh, as long as he survives till the late game, he will become this monster tank. I really seems to be the option which he did play in London against Alliance, where he had this fantastic game, picked up 12 kills, I believe, yeah. and we were praising him, saying this is probably the best Aurelia performance we have seen all split. Yeah, it was pretty much carrying the walls throughout that game. But and then final switch is going to be back to his old tried and tested champion that he played pretty much for around about two seasons in the championship. You have Rengar in the top lane, uh, Renekton, sorry, in the top lane. So a lot of focus here from Copenhagen Wolves on winning the solo lanes. Actually winning all the lanes, Tristan is a very strong lane as well here. So good lanes from Copenhagen Wolves. One of them use the mid-game power of Renekton and Zix to try and bully out Subar crew. Do have the issue, however, that Tristana is fairly weak in the mid-game and gonna have to get some time before she gets strong in the late-game points. But uh, you have Renekton, you have Zix, you have a lot of uh, options here to get past the mid-game and into the late-game. Well, we'll see how this one works out, ladies and gentlemen. If you think one team has the advantage after Champ Select, tweet us at LOLE Sports using the hashtag SHCWIN for the Super Crew and CWWIN for the Copenhagen Wolves. We'll check in your responses in the game. So, about to get things underway. Big, big match. Super Crew could finish third. This is a big, big thing. Yeah. You know, to finish third in the season and you're only the second split in the LCS is a pretty big deal for a team that basically qualified one day before the LCS began back in the yeah. spring. And they did have some changes mm -hmm. on support. Also Selfie coming in for the mid lane instead of yeah. Moops earlier, or oh, last split, sorry. So there were some changes, they had to get the synergy going, but they have been playing as a strong team. We keep talking about this potential they have, they're almost a new mm. CLG in that case. But they're just way too inconsistent. You never know what to expect, especially from Selfie in the mid lane. It's either 10-0 or 0-10. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no in between. It seems that if he gets a champion that he enjoys and knows exactly how to play, it works out well for him. We saw that again, once again with Yasuo. He was so fluid in his play on that champion. But then when you get him a champion that can go all in mm -hmm. and really has no way out, it can be disaster time as we saw before as well. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game four underway, Super Hot Crew facing the Copenhagen Wolves. The winner will decide who will be facing. The tiebreakers will know at the end of this match. Let's see, up in his top lane, Mimer, Cloth Armor and Potions. So, looks like Super Hot Crew wants to actually do standard lanes and just try and outplay Copenhagen Wolves, even though there are some very strong lanes from the side of Copenhagen Wolves. And we've seen the tactic before where the Wolves, they aim to win laning phase, get the very first dragon of the game, get a goal lead, and then try and snowball the game and finish it fairly fast, actually. Not really looking to go full late game when we see Copenhagen Wolves play. Last but different story, however, from Copenhagen Wolves. Mime's about to find Young Book. As soon as he comes around the corner, he's going to get a bit of a trade with him. Impaler's coming up. Oh, he's going to get a skittering spider from Broken Shard instead, so he will not chase on towards him. And that's just simple ward placement. Good ward placement for... Copenhagen Wolves, of course, on that red. It does mean they have full vision as we get a pause. And we get a pause here, Mimer, with some issues. I wonder if he couldn't use his skill, because it looked like he was trying to use the Q and didn't actually land it in that fight. So I wonder if it just didn't level up or something. 
That's what I'm personally thinking, anyway. Could also watching. be the standard rune page, which we have seen a few times, where well, played Lolo in the last game or whatever AP champion, and can really swap. If you, we well, you'd know that by now. <laughs> Before the game load, he'd be like, I can't switch it. <laughs> yeah, I hope you weren't into the game. Maybe he didn't notice. And Maybe he did yet, a hotshot like GG AP. and just yeah. like, I don't need runes at Masteries. I'm just going to play without them. It was good stuff. We actually sat in the office and watched the very first NALCS game where hotshot forgot to select his runes. <laughs> <laughs> Way back when. It is just going to be a quick restart of the game client for Mima, so they'll be sorting that out in just a moment. And uh, Apparently Renekton's HP bar is bucked, according to Mima here. Has he, has he got health? I'm not <laughs> too that, sure. Is that the bug? He's like, guys, the, I it hit him and it didn't show any damage. <laughs> Who knows? Mima's going to sort that out. So he'll be back in the game in a moment. So what do we think overall between these two teams? A lot of pressure on both of them. Uh -huh. Copenhagen Wolves, I was sat upstairs with them as they were watching that game along with SK Support Crew. They were just like, everyone in this room wants us to lose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they want us to play Gambit. Yeah, I mean, it would be a very exciting game against Gambit, especially because Gambit now have come back in Super Week, yeah. won so many games. Still for Copenhagen Wolves, you really want to avoid this tiebreaker game because just get your number seven spot so you can choose whoever you want to face in the promotion tournament, and that's it. No reason to play an extra game if you are the Copenhagen Wolves. Well, as it stands right now, before anyone wins this match, it will be Super Hot Crew facing the tiebreaker, <laughs> because the result of this matter of match actually happens to matter quite a lot. Uh, it will be uh, Millennium in there, Rock Adder in there, SK Gaming. So SK Gaming up against Millennium is most likely, who knows, we'll see how it works out for them. This game, of course, will be the big decider. If Super Crew do win it, they will finish outright third place with 16 wins. And that would leave SK Gaming to face Millennium in the fourth and fifth. Remember, all this is happening. The quarterfinals, they will be played out next Thursday and Friday, right here, best of five in the studios, along with, of course, the challenger matches that will be happening. They're best of fives as well. But right now, we have Mima going. I can't see a hit bar, mate. It's not happening. You don't even. You don't need it. I'm not it's sure. Minions, he's, man. I'm not sure. Minions. If is quite Danish. His Danish goes in that exact accent. But I never heard him speak Danish. Sadly. No. No, he's Swedish. I know he's Swedish. I never know when he's going to go hold off. Swedes don't speak or. Danish. It's a very different language. <laughs> you guys generally learn each other's languages fairly well. No, they have a terrible accent. I can't understand I'm it honestly. I'm pretty sure the Swedish say you guys have a worse accent. And I would actually agree. Okay. <laughs> well, so Danish I know people. There's a lot of Danish in the crowd. There is today, in the crowd. Actually. Yeah, there is. We just have a very beautiful accent, a very special one. And if you can speak it, you sound like a gentleman who mumbles. <laughs> <laughs> people have read it. <laughs> Do you believe Danish accent is beautiful? It is. It is. Like Pulse. These guys at the sausage. front, they believe they have a beautiful Look at accent. Danish people. They've got the flags and everything. Honestly, you know, I have to give credit to the Danish fans because every single week we do have a lot of Danish fans here. Yes. That is for sure. And they are always very loud. They have some flags with them and really make sure people notice the 5.2 <laughs> million Danish people in the world and we want to show it to everyone. You represent yourself well, that's for sure. We Especially do. in League of Legends Pro scene, you represent yourself very well. Way better than England, that's for sure. Speaking of England, there's Impaler. He's next to them. Yes. Alongside a good Danish man in the middle, again. Okay. And a Danish guy in AD carry. <laughs> but there's an English guy in support. It's actually a pretty well split yeah. support crew. Two English people, you have a mm -hmm. Dane. A Polish person in the middle, not a Danish A Polish guy, Selfies. Selfie, sorry, is Polish, Polish yeah. And then I'm thinking Soren on the other side. Yeah, well, we have enough Danes at least. Enough about Denmark. Denmark. I know you love Denmark. It is Lee Epic. Copenhagen Wolves are playing, after all, so... They are. It seems we are going to have another client restart. Although mine is typing like a fury right now. I don't think he's typing, he's only hitting like four buttons. Yeah, he's, he's testing, testing skills out. Or maybe it's just like doing world domination while he sat there. I don't know. The look on his face, it looked like he was. Pretty intense. Let's see. Always, oh, sir. How many referees does it take to restart a client? Clearly a lot here. That's Taco Storm in the background. He looks very uh, worried, actually. He looks intent, doesn't he? Yeah, so, oh, what's going on? There's a Borson in there as well now. 
It's serious. And our new referee. Yes, yes, the new guy in the background. Piotr. I think I didn't butcher his name there. Could also just say Peter. <laughs> we could, if, if you really just want to ruin his name. But let's talk about the current situation. I know tiebreaker. We, we're talking about tiebreakers. Who will come out on top? And more importantly, who does Super Hot Crew want to face? Because it's in their hands. They can either face Rocket, or they go head-to-head -head with CSK Gaming, who have looked very good this weekend, mm -hmm. and potentially face Millennium. Yeah, so if we do look at Super Week, Millennium lost all the games. Mm -hmm. Been playing uh, pretty sloppy, to be honest. Could also just be because they were happy sitting as like just a quarterfinal team, didn't want to aim towards the top two and therefore didn't really prepare too much and again look forward to next week. Um, I'm not too sure. Millennium looked very weird this week here, so... Well, they're on a 0-3 right now. If I had to choose, oh, I would take Millennium at this point. Mm -hmm. Also because I know how well Rocket can prepare for like quarterfinals or playoffs in general, like best out of five. So in that case, I would choose Millennium, but it's always impossible to say with Millennium because they play their own kind of style, very aggressive. You can get surprised if you play against them because if you do fall behind, they will just keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, and all of a sudden you lost the game. Oh, Limbiscuit would be proud of you. I know. What about the Copenhagen Walls? Gambit, potentially a repeat of the start of Super Week, where Gambit, of course, won that game. Mm -hmm. and the very first game, which is what's put them in this situation in the first place, could be tied for seventh place. And, you know, obviously we saw SK Prime and NIP going at it. There's also the likes of H2K out there, Gamers 2, all in the Challenger series. Um, I mean, what? It, you've got to be in a better position with seventh. We heard Diamond saying, well, I don't really mind whether I face the likes of NIP, but you've got to be thinking, surely, you want seventh place. At least you, want, you want at least some choice. Yeah, you just want a choice. Very, very important so you don't feel like you just get stuck with whatever team everyone else doesn't want to fa face. And SK Prime yesterday looked very strong, to be honest. NIP on the other side. Well, honestly, had a very weak they technically went 3 0 if they didn't throw it so hard in that base where Ziz just sort of just hit the Nexus. That's, that's what, what I mean. They were clearly the better team. Be. And if H2K has some issues, <laughs> I can imagine you guys upstairs yelling, hit the damn tower. We were actually yelling pretty loud. I think we were yelling louder than the crowd maybe at that time. Super hot crew though in this game against the Copenhagen Wolves. What do we think? How are we this going to work? Because a Tristana versus a Cogmore, Lake and Power Spikes, both of them. Mm -hmm. Mid lane, Zigzari, actually probably fairly even, I would say, power spike wise. But very different play style. In the case of mm -hmm. he needs to actually He's going to build DFG, we've seen it before, he needs to just single out a target very fast in his team fights. otherwise Soren should have the advantage. And also Copenhagen Wolves can easily, easily siege up a tower, wave clear for days, which is always the lovely thing about Zix, which is why we love to see him play it as well, because he can extend the game if Copenhagen Wolves do fall behind. Big invade coming in the top lane here, Impaler looking to get around the back of Youngbook. There is no ward, no vision, Youngbook pushed very far up lane here. Broken Child, meanwhile, doing the same in the mid lane, Cocoon totally missing, missing on towards Selfie, not going to thread the needle, but that was a good satchel charge, it will blow him backwards, going to dodge out the side, but he will not dodge the basic attack, and it's Soren that picks himself up first blood. Alright, so very early first blood here, Youngbook up in his top lane, had to use his flash, but he did survive. Mimer then pushing into lane. Selfie using both summoners at level 3 and always already forced back to base here. He's gonna fall behind in XP, gonna fall behind in farm. Definitely some issues for him. And both flashes burned in that mid lane as well, remember. So we'll see whether the junglers decide to focus on that. And Pela has a choice really of where he wants to go in this game. You know, he didn't go back off. Ninja Tabby bought first item from Mima on Shivana. Well, you do want some early armor against the Renekton because Jumbok is looking to push up the lane, try and bully Mimer, and you don't want to get in a situation where you get too low on your own tower and the enemy jungler has walked up and it's an easy dive, especially because jungler Elise, go in, get the aggro, repel, and reset it. And obviously with Tristana, we just saw it actually in action there. He's going to use that explosive shot, wants to fire it onto you every single time, but Kasing has the black shield, and that's just going to counter that every time he tries to fire it off, as well as, of course, the Thresh Hooks. But just keep in mind, if he does use the black shield to block the damage from Tristana, it opens up now for Unlimited to go in, flay someone back, or land the hook if he can, and therefore set up the next amount of trading or harass coming in from Blue White. So at the moment, in his bottom lane, it's definitely in favor of Blue White and Unlimited. And they have also been pushing up the lane. We could see Blue White go for Static Shift first item and just keep doing it, keep shoving it in and trying to deny some CS from Mr. Rallis. 
For now, though, they are just sitting standard lanes. We saw the jungle gangs. 1 0 for Broken Shot in that case. Over the British jungler in Palo. Well, the British jungler is the one that's looking to try and make a play. He's backed off instead. I was looking to have a peek down this bottom lane. Mr. Rollins happy to just farm up on the tower. His English support is working out well for him, keeping that. CS going, so 45 to 50. We did see Warlight, of course, yesterday. Went with that, uh, as you mentioned, the Static Shift early on in the game against Rock. The one they did pick up, it is their only victory of the week. So sticking with what they know, sticking with what worked in that bottom lane pair. But it's very, very important for Copenhagen Wolves they do win the laning phase because they always want to go for the first dragon of the game and then they want to go for next one and next one. And even if they are behind, they will keep going in and look for the fight. And it's one of the reasons they often in the past have just fallen so far behind early in the games and couldn't do anything to come back because they keep picking these team fights. So as long as the laning, laning phase goes well for them and they will be strong for the first or second dragon fight, they might be able to win it like they did yesterday against Rocket and then take the whole game. Right now it is Woolite continuing to keep that pressure down. Good explosive catch once again. Selfie avoiding this time will get away. And Spirit Rush enough to keep him safe at level six. That's the big thing with Ari, if your flash is down, it doesn't really matter because you still have that ultimate to rely on to dash away. But he just hit level 6 as Broken Shark came in here, otherwise he would have been stunned up here and probably would have died again. Ulti is down, however, and up his top lane, Mimer, looking to be aggressive. Pouncing in, no ultimate coming out from Youngbuck. Didn't decide to use that Dominus. Instead, he will be safe and limited. Is he going to throw any moves out here? No, nope, doesn't look like it. Because he's happy to just black shield up once again. And every time Warlight fires that off, very passive bottom lane, actually. It's been the mid and the top that they're focusing on. The jungler's not really paying any attention. So I think they're just feeling comfortable in those two bottom lane pairings that they can deal with themselves. It may well be a blue invade, though, coming out. Or will it be an early dragon? But remember, Selfie has no flash and no ult at this point here. So he can't really get into any fights in Pale as well. Wisely enough goes back into his own jungle here. Just wanted to check if they could spot a Broken Shard, who's already level 6 at this point. And I like the fact Copenhagen Wolves put so much focus on the mid lane because the forced early flash came in once again. If they pick up a second kill, all of a sudden selfie. The guy we just talked about either goes 10-0 or 0-10, would have had a very bad start. All the other teams always talk about how he's a player who can go and tilt if he does get the bad start. So clearly the tactic from Copenhagen Wolves to try and shut him down. Blue buff being picked up. Soren will get that one though. Pressure from Super Hot Crew. Death Sensor slams on Mr. Rales. Good rocket straight back on there. Tries to trade back, but honestly, he didn't put as much damage down as that single explosive shot. It's it's quite annoying, really. It's one of those passives that hits you and just slowly burns you down damage over time that you just don't quite notice. It's the worst. A zillion bomb as well. Yeah. Just waiting. Okay, one well, you even get the ah, timer on that one. You're just like, yeah. yeah. Even worse. Mid lane, however. CS lead for Soren. Also with the first button, Impaler will find himself a pink ward. Very, very passive start to the game, especially down this bottom lane. They're basically just pushing it in. The other team picks up the farm, push it back. And up in his top lane, Jumbo gets a flash again. So uh, Mimer once again jumping him. Oh, well, moment. It is Impaler looking to go in towards this top. Let's see if he can manage to land this successful gank up with the first one, the Super Hard Crew. Broken Shard is nearby. I'm not sure Mimer's going to pounce on this one. He doesn't want to dive on through. And it does mean, of course, that he's safe. Broken Shard does come up to support him. And now Mimer to dash away from this one. Can't stick around too long. And Paler heading back up there to make this a two on two. Look at Young, but look how aggressive he's going. Paler just going to wait. Don't think he fancies a straight up brawl with Broken Shard in that dry brush. No, he's going to back off. We have to remember. Broken Shot actually went for Quill Code here. So not building AP early on, which will make him slightly weaker in these small ganks, these counter ganks. But in terms of team fights, because he's gonna get the extra HP, he can act now as a second tank together with Youngbok. It does mean, however, there's a lot of uh, all the damage actually needs to come from Soren and Woolite, unless Broken Shot wanna complete his Spirit of the Ancient Golem and then build some AP, which we have seen before, some magic penetration, sorry which we have seen before, and then still do some damage. But uh, early on here, less damage from Elise than we normally see. So a bit more tankiness. Well, Static Shield was indeed completed by Wallite early on. We'll give him a bit of a push. I mean, as if Tristan is not going to push hard enough as it is in lane. That explosive shot is going to continue that one. Mimer trying to bait in Youngbook a little bit here. 
Dominus waiting to try and pop that one out. Mima could pounce across to, of course, gives him some big bonus stats once he hits that Dragon Descent while Impaler waits off at the side with Cataclysm. Flash still up for both these top laners. Mima to step away. So while the Wolves were putting their focus on the mid lane earlier, Impaler's been in this top lane here a few times because they want to make sure Mimer can either go even or get a lead over Youngbrook, get his item build up, get some tankiness so Youngbrook won't be able to bully him out of the laning phase and then simply outscale him. Because Shivana in a late game teamfight brings so much both engage, but also because she becomes so tanky with a passive, where Renekton does get outscaled by pretty much every single top laner, which we see in the current meta. Selfie being tracked by Copenhagen Wolves. Bomb bouncing through. And, you know, it gives him easy coverage that there's a ward in that bush. It's a simple 30 gold for selfie. So, wave clear continuing between them. Slight advantage for Soren. Top lane slight advantage. Good jump from Wallite there. Dark Binding was landing just as he rocket jumped in away. Does give him force. Some escape. Mimer finally going back. Well, some fight came almost completed just as Jungbook's about to buck off. Got that triple door and start for him. Mimer's going to hold this on the tower though. Nearly messed up there. Warlight taken no, but again, there's so much escape for Warlight. The lantern, the rocket jump, he can get out of most situations they can throw at him. I would love to see Copenhagen Wolves set up a dragon now. Mima used to teleport in the top lane, Jombok is running from base back to this top side. So they will have the advantage and can send down an extra man in case they start the dragon. And also because down this bottom lane, Warlight is always pushing it into the tower, getting some poke onto Mr. Rider, so it opens up Four Copenhagen Wolves to push it, move to Dragon, teleport down in if needed, and they are actually moving now all four members. Yeah, Dragon's going to be started off by the Wolves, not really any reaction from the Super Arc no teleport, as you mentioned. This will be a simple, simple first Dragon for the Wolves, gives them a gold advantage. Just that short of 2,000. So very standard play from the Wolves, using the Renekton in the top lane to force out teleport from Mimer, and also one of the reasons Impaler use so much time in the top lane. If they could force Jumbok to use an early teleport, maybe Super Crew could have done what the Copenhagen Wolves just did here. Still, using the strong lanes we talked about to get the first dragon, to get an early goal lead. But we are taking it very slow here. Very easy. It's a lot on the line for either team. Some playoff positions for the Super Crew, relegation positions for the Copenhagen Wolves. Race been stolen away by Selfie. That's risky. Yeah, because Broken Child's laying on the side. But again, Spirit Rush gets him out of the situation. Only just using the bomb. Didn't bother using it to get back into lane either. Youngbook again escapes into top lane. Mima goes aggressive, but Youngbook, happy to play this one quite passively, is building in towards that Blade of the Rune King first. So wants to continue the aggression, despite the fact he's got to be that big tank. Whoa! Burst of damage on Soren there from Selfie. So I do like it if Copenhagen Wolves want to keep him split pushing and not look for big team fights. If they do, he's going to be very squishy for the first fights here. But it is their Youngbug classic on Renekton up in his top lane. He loves to build Blade of the Rune King as the first item. Simply because your W counts as one hit effects and you can get two, three hits with it. And therefore you proc the 8% current health from Blade of the Rune King on every single one. And it's just very good burst from the start which is the reason he loves to, to build it. But again, it does force him to stay as a split pusher for now. Broken Shot, just fading out Ignite. Yeah, gonna try and draw it out, uses it. So Ignite goes down, Selfie not able to secure anything from that one, and Soren bullies him out of lane. That means he's gonna be pretty low on mana and health as this next wave continues to push. So Soren continuing to try and drive some advantage. Pretty even in terms of CS, because Selfie, of course, has been taking away those wraiths which has kept him up just about. Not in terms of gold, though. That won't obviously give him the same amount of gold. Mimer has Jungbook just peeking out behind him. Uses the build toward a cutlass, actually, at the start of that fight. But Mimer was ill-affected, and of course, with the Sunfire Cape, it's not really going to do a great deal. Yeah, so right now, Jungbook is actually weaker than Mimer. He needs to complete the blade before he can start dueling him. And I'm going to take a little bit of post. 80 carry wise. Oh, this is a risky fight for Wallet. He's only got the static shiv, whereas Mr. Rallis has just gone back to complete the Trinity Force. Really happy to have that duel. And Wallet, I think he took a bit more burst than he was planning there. Still, though, notice how Wallet already has to have their has the BF sword as well. So we'll get Infinity Edge. Next time he backs, if they do time it correctly, next dragon could be where he gets the gold he needs. Go back to base, get his two items, which is the important part for Tristana, where she will now start scaling up into the late game. But Mr. Rallis, at this point, with Trinity Force, is very strong. And is also looking to just trade in there. We actually see Subaku for once push up the bot lane. The problem is there is a ward, so if Impaler steps forward, 
He will get spotted, but Walla himself could get drived on him. And Impaler just waiting on the side. He's holding Broken Shadow's here. time right now. He's going to go across. There's going to be jumping towards him. Broken Shadow. He's holding the Cataclysm. Finally, he uses on Broken Shot. The Limited now focused. Mr. Rylas gets him down. You can see on towards the third one. Can he get the triple kill? Walla going to have to jump and flash away from this one. They're going to follow. Dark finding lands. In comes Impaler. It's going to be Mimer that gets the kill. And a three man cleanup squad down the bottom. Gets all of the kills for Super Crew. And the engage from Copenhagen Wolves completely failed here. There was Lantern for Broken Shot, the flash from Unlimited, but they didn't manage to lock down Mr. Rallis. And instantly, Super Crew turned it around, teleport from Mimer. Also, just to secure the very last kill. We'll lose the top tower, but got bot tower for it as well. Yeah, one tower Engine's trade for three kills. Destroyed. They're happy with that. I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. So, backing off. Didn't change to be a build up, but check this. Good start. Impa very patient play from Impaler. But notice how Broken Shot and Unlimited does nothing in this fight here. Flash Lantern in. Yes, there was a play, but it missed Rise. He flashed, misses the hook, misses also the cocoon, and then Subaku is in a perfect situation to turn it. You know what? We said it was a good trade, but actually, I think I'd question why the teleport there. He came in, there was already a double kill before he even appeared on the teleport. That was already very much in their favor. It was only Warlock they got That's when he point. came in to pick up the kill. So he could have held that top turret. So it could have been an even better trade for Superhawk, who's still in their favor because they picked up the kills. But yeah, you're actually right here. He should have uh, stayed in this top lane and tried to defend. The tower, however, was already taking some damage from Youngberg because he's constantly pushing it down. And Selfie uh, not really been using his uh, ultis to uh, deal a lot of damage in this game yet. That spirit rush to great effect. Missed it this time around. Soren just explosive satchel charging away and gets himself to save him. Mr. Rales once again got the support of his jungler, so I think he's feeling pretty safe down here. Currently 201 now. What's with those Berserker Greaves? There's no support nearby just yet. He's off. Going back to base. We'll see what Kassin goes with here. The dragon, of course, is up in 30 seconds, so everybody's. Kind of positioning themselves. No teleport for either top laner actually at the moment. That won't be available for this dragon. So we'll see whether they start making the moves. It looks like Mimer is heading down this way. Yeah, so he's moving. Yombok wants to just push out the lane here. I'm not sure if Copenhagen Wolves want to try and stall the dragon until his teleport is ready. Just about 20 seconds or can I just see from the timer ticking down here. But still, it's not ready yet. Mimer is with Super Hawk Crew. Dragon is spawning in just a few seconds. They can start it. Instantly, the Copenhagen Wolves will have to contest with only four people. Looks like it will be clear down there. Now he's moving. Um, yep, now he's moving down. A little bit late on this one. It is, of course, a long timer on that teleport. So, Dragon down to half. It's going to go. Impaler's got this one secured. And why is he the Wolves do back out? They've made some tricky decisions on that before. This time, they fancy going for Kasing. And they throw a cocoon and a hook towards the Black Shield. And because he just walks away, no problem. Mega Inferno Ooh. will go out. They're going to have to flash for it if they want it. Well, let's see here. Going in. Broken Shard. Oh, they got it. Got him. But they're going to lose Broken Shard now. They're going to lose a lot more, maybe. Mimer could come through. Selfie will come around the side. They're unlimited taken low. Soren actually missed the charm on towards him. Now Youngbook comes around the side. Super Hawk Crew stepping away. Some pretty poor team play from both sides there. But still, mid tower now for Copenhagen Wolves. They shouldn't have given up this dragon beforehand. It was sloppy play with teleport and with Yombok up in his top lane. Just some mistiming or miscommunication from Copenhagen Wolves. Did, however, get a mid tower. Traded one for one as well. And it's very important they get down these other turrets if they do want to play more aggressive and want to get some wards in Subaku's jungle. Which you now only miss the bottom lane one, which is not very important, actually. Soren didn't care about that pick one, clearly. He's going to keep on back. Selfie pushes back in. So mid tower did go down. The second one of the game for the Wolves. They will wipe out these wave. And maybe now they're going to group up. Darbinding not even remotely close to catching onto Sorin. And it means that they will back away. Top lane, that's going to get wiped out. Mine will go up there. It's the question is, I think it's actually Wolves that may well be the aggressor now. They seem to be the one that's grouping. They have a gigantic wave that Youngbook is going to happily farm out down that bottom lane. So as we start to transition into the mid game, how do we rate this one? They're pretty even in goal. Who is coming out on top and who's going to be looking to be the aggressor? So the fact that on a will light almost as in vintage completed and will actually be very strong, even from this point on, means Copenhagen Wolves have the ability to now siege up on towers because you have the 
Long range from Tushana. You have the poke coming in from Soren on Zix as well. And you do have a Renekton who is very strong in this mid game here. So Copenhagen Wolves are definitely in a situation where they can start pushing down and force a tower, but they need to be careful because Anari can blow up people early, especially because DFG is almost completed for Sophie. And then we might see Super Hawk on the other hand try and flank around Copenhagen Wolves, land a charm and just blow up the first target. Because even Copenhagen or even Youngbug, who is supposed to be the tank. Won't be able to survive if he gets caught by Selfie and one more member from Super Hot Crew. Well, Youngbok's getting some good free time down that bottom lane. He's continuing to farm off. Mimer will stop him pushing on towards that tower. And it's given Wallite now a chance to move up to the top and clear three waves so far. But we do see him kind of waiting off the side there with Mr. Rales. They want to try and make a move. Look at this. Kasim coming up as well. But Mr. Rales, big trade for him. All right, will come out on top, though. Uh, Mr. Rales, sorry, will come out on top. Unlimited. He's not going to get away. Flash Pancake comes out. Dark Binding will land. And Impaler gets himself the kill. Ooh, Megan and Bomb will get dodged out. Mr. Rales didn't step into that one as Selfie gave the warning. So there was no Infinity Edge yet for Wulat, and yet he jumped in towards Mr. Rallis. Missed the jump, didn't get any damage from it, and then he started moving away as soon as he saw Impaler and just got hit from Mr. Rallis constantly and ended up dying for it. Very, very aggressive play, but really backfired. There was no wards in the jungle of Super Haku to see if anyone from Super Haku was there to help Mr. Rallis. And if we just saw Wulat, bald Steve, jumping in on stun. Jump straight across it, Dark Binding on Broken Shard, not gonna get followed through, but there's a wave coming in the mid lane and Super Hot Crew are all moving towards it. They fancy that middle turret, but if Mr. Rales isn't going to join them, then they're not going to get it, that's for sure. For now, Broken Shard is the only, only member to actually defend. He's only against support, so not exactly very hard. Now Selfie joins in, gets some damage, and Soren is back with a great wave clear. And Woolad, going back to this top lane here, probably not going to see him jump in again in the next few minutes. Honestly, in terms of teamwork, I think Super Hot Crew look disjointed to me. There's a number of times where there's been opportunities, like one member's trying to create them and everybody else is not on the same wavelength, they just back away. Communications even isn't there, I'm not too sure, but they are leading. Nonetheless, individual skill is carrying them through. And of course, that great fight down the bottom lane where they just outnumbered them four on three. Youngbuck got himself a little bit of time here and Paler is going to defend this turret, which means it's in the immediate sign. I'm just going to back off. Let the minions just take a couple more chunks of hit points off of the tower. 1 minute 20 until that next dragon is up. Blue buff looking like it will be soon as Copenhagen Wars try to get their dominance in and around the mid lane. But really also just to highlight the passive early game we saw from the laners, both junglers has been part of all the kills. So, Whenever they, was, uh, they weren't ganking, nothing really happened in the lanes. They were just farming or maybe trading a little bit between each other. But as soon as the jungler showed up, we saw some kills. And Pale down this bottom lane were part of all the kills on the Copeland Wolves. He was up there to help Mr. Rallis in the one-on-one -on -one against Tristana. So he's just been everywhere on the map and been the guy to secure the kills from, uh, from Super Hard Crew. Didn't get any kills on Selfie yet, which is a bit different compared to what we normally see. Soren caught out there, the charm and our binding lands. Mr. Rallis comes in. Gets the last shot on Unlimited. That leaves them pretty short in the defense on this mid lane turret. You can see Selfie fancies it. Can't get it quite close enough. Soren very, very low on hit points. Can't really fight this one. Has to be very defensive there. I've got a good wave clear from Wallite though. And again, there is that ultimate being used, but it's not enough to clear it. So now Copenhagen Wolves falling further and further behind in terms of gold, so they might just have to rely on wave playing with Soren and just sit back and wait now for Woolite to scale up and then take late game team fights because they're going to lose the next dragon as well. Not in a position to fight. And the mid game clearly gone in favor of Super Hawk Ruby. It's been all about first the gank in bottom lane, then the trade in top lane for Woolite, which opened up for a lot of kills on Mr. Rallis. He's very strong at this point, almost completed blade of the Ruin King. And also just Super Hawk now been picking up the towers. Remember they got the top tower earlier. Also by Woodlight died. Well, it seems that Super Hot Crew have their destiny in their hands, and right now it seems they will be getting that third place secured. The Copenhagen Wolves, can they claw themselves back into this game? It's a 5,000 gold differential between the two teams right now. Three to two in turrets, the Super Hot Crew with the advantage. DFG, as you mentioned, completed for selfies. He's going to start looking for those big kills and will be able to start popping 
the likes of Soren or Wallite if he gets onto them, and of course Unlimited if he's simply collateral damage gets in the way. And with Impaler on, in, on Jarvan, with Mimer on Shivana, there's a lot of options from Subaku to actually engage. Also because you have Binding, you have the Charm. Cobalting Wolves always need to be careful when moving around here because one skill shot onto them and Selfie will jump, pop his GFG, and either kill them or get them so low that Mr. Wireless can just walk in and give them one auto attack, like we just saw before here in the mid lane. For now though, it is actually Cobalting Wolves pushing up this mid lane with all five members. Selfie would end, was down in this bottom lane, will be joining in and... Uh, Going back again, waiting to see what Subaku wants to do because Copenhagen Wolves at this point are just waiting for Subaku to make a move and then try and punish. Nobody's really dealing with Selfie who is once again pushing that bottom lane. Now we see Youngbuck going uh, down there. Sorry, uh, Wallite going down there. Of course, Mega Inferno Bomb's always available to wipe out the wave if required from the mid lane. Impaler is going to make a peek towards you, but they're going to have to tower dive, and it's a beefy crocodile to tower dive. Already started off, though. He is going to get caught out. It's half his hit points already down. He hasn't even been able to pop that Dominus. Now, instead, we'll just go down. Keep in mind here, Yombok, he built the Spirit Visage as his first defensive item. If you ignore the boots here, you have the Blade doing physical damage to him. You have Jarman doing physical damage and auto attacks from Mimer. So, with, with so little armor, it was very easy for Subaru to just kill him here. And it's one of the issues when you do build Blade of the Rune King, you invest a lot of gold into damage, which does make you squishy. And Subaku killed now. Yombok and got a top tower, even though there was a Zix and the Tristana to actually wave there. It doesn't matter if you just move to a different lane, kill whoever is defending, and take a tower. But, I mean, I, I'm confused by that last fight. If you got your ultimate dominant, oh my god, unlimited, you did. He's gonna get caught out again. Mr. Rala is happy to get the last hit. Now Broken Shard caught out. Ignite goes down so far on towards him. And the Super Hot crew taking exactly what they want. I'm confused by Younger's play there. He used the flash, yet it's not his ultimate which was available. Yet his ultimate is on a much shorter cooldown than that flash. I'm not sure if oh, he expected... Oh, 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 oh Selfie, Selfie might be in trouble. In trouble. He's dead. Wallite's gonna get on towards him. That's a queen cl clean kill for him. But now Impaler slides in, that forces the rocket jump. Okay, but up in his top lane here, yeah, I'm not too sure why he didn't use the ult. Maybe he figured it was too late in the end and just saved it. But he used the flash. Mind. If you're gonna, if you're gonna flash, may as well use your ultimate. It's with, I don't know. I just, I'm confused by that little bit of play. Mr. Rales, though, dominant performance from him so far. 5 0 2. Everything being set up nicely for him. Great left. Biker Singh. And again, 1 0 7 for Impaler. You know, he's had some criticism from us, I think it's safe to say, over the current week and has been a little bit lacking in his play. But today, the Super Hot crew have absolutely stepped up. And that is what they need to do with quarterfinals looming. It is, and again, they don't want to get into this tiebreaker. They want to avoid it, so really showing here how good they can be. But also we do see from Copenhagen Wolves, they still seem to have a lot of issues where they come late for a dragon, or they get caught out of position, or they make this over-aggressive play, and it gets punished. The gank in bottom lane, then the fight up in top lane, which was pretty much where Subaku got the goal lead. And it's just been the story for Copenhagen Wolves. They want to make plays, they want to fight, don't want to just sit back and farm normally. And most teams in Europe know how to punish them. Let's see, the Copenhagen Wolves are grouped up. There's four members pushing down this mid lane. Selfie's off in the top. Not binding though, catching on Unlimited as he immediately gets some poke from Mr. Rales. Off of the side, Mimer and Youngbuck are trading blows just one for one. Not really a great deal happening between them. Impaler looking to flank around, trying to get some vision in and around that, the jungle areas. Good vision, actually, from the Zupart crew. They have good notice, which is why Mimer knew Wallite was coming. Pink Ward will get cleared out, though, which means he'll step away. Selfie still unchecked in that top lane, pushing in. You just push it all the way to the tower here. The rest of your team is already pushing the other lanes. You just saw Tristan in the bottom lane. You see four members in this mid lane, so you can safely push it in and hope someone will go up to defend and then Selfie will try and one-on-one -on -one them. It's not taking a lot of damage there. Look at the position in Selfie. He's going to try and sneak around the side here. Soren's low. He fancies it. No, it would be a big tower dive instead. He's just going to rotate back up towards the top. Wallite cleared the wave. He will continue the farm. 
as Maima continues the pressure in the bottom lane. They do need to place a ward in the base of Copenhagen Wolves so they can see Bull Light moving between the mid lane and the top lane, and then Selfie can try and kill them. They did, did actually try and put a pink ward, was cleared however, so uh, Selfie not really feeling. He has the ward control to stay between the two towers and then just kill whoever is moving to the top lane. For now, they just the entire jungle is owned by Super Hawk. Mimer broken shot going at it once again. Blade of the Rune King is available for Mimer if he needs it. Vanchi's Veil has been popped. Dominus was used. Now they're turning around. He baits in Impaler to come around here. Youngbok's in trouble. Broken Shard will join them, but he is too late. Megrim Furnabomb lands. Impaler very low. Impaler should be out of slide away. He has got Flash available if he requires it. He does. Cuckoo will not land. Now here comes Mr. Rales. Now you're in trouble, Copenhagen Wolves. They're going to have to slide away. Dark Binding. Oh, oh nice out from Soren. Good dodge. But look at this. It's leaving Selfie all alone in the top lane to put all of the damage back onto the inhibitor turret. And Poor little Wool Light, the only member left to actually defend. And Selfie does back away because the rest of Copenhagen Wolves is in base. But once again, Jombok fighting against Mimer. Impaler is the guy who joins in, turns it around. Tuboku picks up another kill, takes another dragon. And they could, at this point, just start baiting up Baron as well, if they don't want to pressure the lanes and just wait for one binding or one charm from Selfie to land and then blow up whatever target is. Honestly, I don't think they need to do that. They don't need to, but they can do it. The 12,000 gold ahead, and they are basically pulling Copenhagen walls from pillar to post. They don't know where to defend at what time. That top inhibitor turret is so exposed. You can see they've just pinged down on it, and they're like, yep, this is absolutely our target. We'll clear out all of the waves, which they've been doing very well so far, and just keep that pressure on. Youngbook has already proven that he can sort of deal with Mimer, but he's already in that kind of losing period. Seven, level 17 up against the Shivana. Shivana generally will come out on top. They're both fairly evenly built. So let's see here. Impaler moved to the Baron. They're just waiting for Mr. Rallis. Selfie. <laughs> Getting some damage. damage yeah. But they have the bottom lane pushing now. You might as well go straight to Baron. And if someone from Copenhagen Wolves goes back to defend it, even if it's Youngbug, you can just uh -oh, pick up the target. Oh, unlimited dead. He's going to get taken down here. The question is a matter of who will get the final kill. It's going to be gifted to Impaler. Broken Child caught out. Well, if your jungler's going to go down, he manages to get away. Repels across to the Golems. That's only the support down. It's not the end of the world for the Wolves. They can still try and get in. Broken Child only on half hit points, though, coming into this fight. And if he gets caught with one of those dark bindings from Kasing, will be curtains for him. Mima is going to keep defensive duties. By far the strongest opponent. They're actually peeling away. They don't fancy the Baron. Instead, they're caught on Youngbuck. He's going to get in trouble. Some charm lands. He's dead. He's going to go down. Now they're caught on. Mima comes around the side. Broken shards. Soren all very low. Everybody running for their lives. Woolite, the AD carry in trouble. He's going to have to use his ultimate to blow them away. Gets a lifesteal back as Super Hot Crew once again go back to the Baron Pit. This time, they will secure it. Still, Broken Shard is alive. He does a flash. He can go in once again. There's no pink ward from Super Hot Crew, so if they do manage to place a ward, there's only one sweeping lens and... Oh, my broken. well, he went for Broken Shard. Warlight caught the brunt of the damage, though. Broken Shard will go down. Selfie comes flashing through. Didn't expect that one, nor did Flash Unlimited. For That's for sure. Warlight's going to get on towards him, though. Will manage to get the kill, but not before the Baron is picked up by the Super Hot Crew. All right, so Baron and Super Hot Crew, yes, they didn't need the Baron. It's just an easy way to get Copenhagen Wolves out of the base and pick up some more kills. And now they do have the Baron buff and can go back to what they did before. Mima in one lane, Selfie in a different lane, and then Mr. Rallis pushing up the mid lane. And at the moment, it's just a matter of time before Super Hot Crew kills an inhibitor, gets Super Minions into the base of Copenhagen Wolves, and then the Wolves are forced to just pick a team fight. And if they do manage to win it, they can try and delay or try and make a comeback. Otherwise, Tsubaku should be able to pick it up and avoid the tie break. Yeah, this of course will mean that the Copenhagen Wolves will end at 8 and 20. The same as Gambit Gaming. And they will be playing off against Gambit Gaming in a tiebreaker that will follow the Millennium Alliance game. And that will be the only tiebreaker, thank goodness, this time around in these summer. Summer often brings some impressive tiebreakers. This time, it's not going to be one of those big five-team tiebreakers that we saw back in spring. But it's going to be a great game because Gambit have looked so aggressive Something in the Super Week. So I'm really expecting Gambit to just come in, look constantly for fights, and we know Copenhagen Wolves, they're not shy to jump in as well. So we're going to get two aggressive teams against each other. And of course, it's going to be on stage here. So everyone in the crowd, stay. You're not allowed to leave. <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> it's going to be kept captive here. Selfie. 
moves on through, motors up that lane, keeps the waves crashing against Copenhagen Wolves, the rest of his team rotating around, getting the vision of all of the jungle area. The Wolves completely held captive in their own base right now. They can't push out. They're going to try to start something off on Mimer once again. They will pop his Banshees available, but that's about all they're going to do. It's a fight for Red Buff. That's what they're doing right now, fighting tooth and nail for anything they can get. Tsuboku is just feeling wards running around. Now they're actually pushing up, but they keep self in the mid lane now. And uh, not really going towards the towers yet. You can even put Morgana and Selfie together and just land one of the CCs and kill whatever target it is to open up the base. For now, they still keep self in the mid lane. Well, Mr. Rallis just took down half the hit points without any response. Of course, he could just lifesteal his way back to full health along with the regeneration that he gets from that Baron. Meanwhile, top lane, you do see Selfie sneaking up there. Broken Shard, uh, Youngbook, sorry, and it's being aggressed on to Mima. Now comes Selfie, comes around the side there, Charm does not land, but that tower gain. He's regenerating a little bit of health, but the bottom one, meanwhile, Mr. Rales takes that one down as Woolite takes a quick orb from Selfie. They're pushing both top and bottom with ease, and there's not a lot that the Wolves can do to respond here. They split into which way they're going to defend it. They've got an exposed inhibitor now that Mr. Rales is singly auto-attacking and nobody's getting close to him. No, I never tried to uh, set up a fight here, but even if they do land some CC onto uh, Super Hardcore, I'm not sure they want to go in. They have to, otherwise they're going to lose the inhibitor, which is gone. That's the inhibitor gone. Now we do see Mima pushing in with the minion wave. The rest of the team rotate towards it. Youngbook still just off at the side, all on his own. That charm is available from Selfie if he wants to throw it out. Dark Binding lands, Charm will follow. Dominus comes out, not going to happen. DFG blows him away. Selfie gets dropped in the meantime. Broken Shard, he's in trouble. Impaler doesn't quite get the kill on towards him, but Mr. Rales does. He gets himself the double on Unlimited. Mega Inferno Bomb lands on three members of the Super Hawk crew. It's going to force them back for now, but only in time for Mr. Rales to follow the next wave in and continue the auto attacks on the inhibitor turret. And remember the top tower is still pretty low. Will I though? Oh, not a kill actually. Got a pop there quickly. Will I? There's still a danger, man. He's pretty tanky right now. Could do a lot of damage. But that does force them away. So the Wolves live to fight another day. They're going to try and force the Super Hawk crew back and try and shove one of those waves down. Blue buff and Dragon now for Super Crew can go back to base, use all the gold they picked up and then move into towards the Copenhagen Wolves again here. And we really need to see an ace from the Wolves if they wanna keep playing the game here. Blue Light needs to just go huge as Soren, get a pentakill. No blue buff, of course. Just gonna see the fight again. Once again, uh, engage from Unlimited misses. Jumbug is the first target, he blows up instantly. Selfie, however, he does actually die, which means now Super can remember they are tanking the tower during this fight. And Woolite playing very aggressive once again. Once a way actually, you see a nice bomb from Soren, does a lot of damage. We go back here, Woolite is the only guy left. Kissing is still very, very low. He wants to go in, land the binding. Woolite is like, no, nope, and you're dead. Quick two shots. Very rapid fire on that. Stana. So, Selfie getting wipe out of the wave. Push on through the walls. They've shoved everything out. They can from the base. They've done just about all is possible to hold on. Keep the waves at bay, but bowing up in just over a minute's time. I don't think Super Hot Crew are going to worry too much about that. They didn't get the middle inhibitor down, by the way. All selfies going to get caught. How did the Wolves going to try and fight down towards him? The question is, will he get away? The bombs will rattle through. Spirit Rush, is it enough? No, he gets onto Broken Shard. Broken Shard will get him down. Impaler's going to come around the side. He's got Mimo with him. The rest of the team focusing through. It's Mr. Rallas that they need, and he's not quite in range right now. Four or five members of the Wolves pushing up towards him, coming around the side. They're still taking everything they can at Impaler. Now Mr. Rallas is there. He can turn this one around. Mega Inferno Bomb will land, but it's only really going to do an ample amount of damage. Meanwhile, Kasing is going to back away. Well, the Wolves, they tried something. Didn't work out for them. Look at the mid lane. You can see there's minions going to start crashing against that inhibitor. Super minions going into the base. The Wolves have to back off. They can't stick around. They've got to go defend their base. Still, they did manage to get a kill and now force Super Crew back and just wait for Baron here. So, opens up for Broken Shard to maybe try and steal the Baron. Or the Copenhagen Wolves surprising Super Crew around the, the Baron pit here. So, Kasing is running up by himself. 
A bit weird this two bar crew is actually splitting up at this point. Instead of just taking five, go up to the open inhibitor. You are so strong. Take it. And then you can move to top lane or to the Baron. Instead, Selfie just went to this top lane all alone. Nice setup by Copenhagen Wolves to actually kill him. Well, I mean, it, it basically screams the Super Bowl crew. It just shows they're super weak as been a torrid time while they may well get a win here they've proved before they can beat the lower teams it's the top teams they struggle with and as you just said you know the teamwork is not there and coming into quarterfinals that's a dangerous dangerous time to be lacking in the teamwork to not be on the same page look here everybody's stepping away and suddenly it's like we're going to start the baron wait no actually we're not going to start the baron because we're going to back away we're not sure and, and they don't have a pink ward questioning yeah they don't have a pink ward they just don't have anything because well because things gone for Leandris. He had a lot of time to go back to base, get a pink ward here, instead of running up towards the base and trying to land a binding on Bullet. If Bromjak can steal this one, it may, maybe, gonna buy something for Kobe Wolves. He's gonna go in for it. A lot of damage from Soren here. A lot of damage. Mega Inferno bomb. Oh, that's a bit too early. Well, the Wolves go in. They may be able to finish it themselves. Can they they got it? it. They got it. Would you believe it? Now Super Hot Crew. They can try and turn this one around. The Wolves gonna run away. Selfie goes in pretty deep. Mime has been caught out. He's gone towards Wallite. Wallite will not take him down. Now we're gonna see Mr. Rales cleaning up. He gets one, gets two. They push on towards Unlimited. Impaler's got his ultimate available. He can flag and drag and dumpster straight on his head. He's got no flash to get out of it. Unlimited's in trouble. That's He's gonna go down. Mr. Rales gets himself the triple as they push on through and probably will take the game. So a bit of a sloppy ending from Subar Crew, but they were so far ahead here. As soon as Copenhagen Wolves tried to fight for the Baron, Subar Crew were the stronger team and now pushing into the base. Oh, Mr. Rales, 11-0-4, big strong performance. Honestly, all he's been doing is pretty much last hitting though, because the rest of the team doing work. They will take down the two Nexus turrets and the Super Hot Crew will finish third in the standings. That means they will be facing Rockat and the Wolves, they have to face Gambit. A very, very important tiebreaker. Who gets to be number eight and who gets to be number seven and choose what challenger team they want to face in the promotion tournament. But still though, the start was actually okay for Copenhagen Wolves. Again, like we see in most of the games, the laning phase was fine. Jamak did well in the top lane, even though we had Impaler constantly ganking him in the top lane. Brogja got the first blood in mid lane, got the first dragon, but in the second dragon, for some reason, Super Crew were allowed to just run down five members and take it. Even though Copenhagen Wolves had the time on everything, they didn't contest it, they weren't in a position to do it. And then we had the bot lane gank, and all of a sudden, Super Crew were heading gold and just used it to control the game. Well, honestly, I do feel while it was a win for Super Crew, they've gone two and two this week. That may well just be papering over the cracks because there seems to be some very big cracks in the teamwork. Thank you very much, D-Man. 11-0-4 uh, on Kogma in that game. Fantastic performance. Seems like it was pretty straightforward. The only moment it might have gotten scary was the Baron. Talk us through the late game for you guys. Um, the late game, we pretty much just had to go 1-1-3, one, one, where we would go free in bot lane, and then our mid, and he would just rotate around, and we would just take turrets. And yeah, the Baron was pretty much free, but yeah, sadly, he stole it. He did throw it right from under your nose. Um, talk me about Super Week from your perspective. I asked Pimpaler before because, of course, you came into this day being 0-2, but being able to straighten it out and getting that third place. Um, yeah, I think the Super Week was pretty bad for us. We, the first two games we played with yeah, our demon being in the game, like we didn't even do anything for both games, and we were just waiting for them to finish. But we managed to pick it up for these two games today, and I'm really happy to get third place, yeah. So that does mean with that third place locked in that you will be facing Rock at first in a quarterfinal and a possibly Fnatic over in the semifinal. How happy are you that you, or sad are you that you ended up with Rock at in the end? Uh, I'm fine with Rock at. It doesn't really matter who we are playing against in playoffs because we have to win against them anyway to get the Worlds. So I didn't really care who I'm going to play against. So how high do you think the chances are for the Super Hot Crew to make it to Worlds? Well, obviously the chance is there. Um, we will try our hardest to achieve it, um, but I don't know how big of a chance we have. We'll just try our hardest. All right, well, thank you very much. Congratulations. No problem. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it is Alliance versus Millennium. We're going to stock up on buffs, and we'll be back in three and a half. <laughs> 